Hello again, it's Tubal Kane. Today I wanted to give you a short demonstration on how to deal with an armature and turning down the commentator of the armature. Now this armature is out of a generator on an old tractor and you know they haven't used generators on tractors or cars in about 40 years now so this really is a kind of a lost art and probably will have a little interest to people but if you have an old car or old tractor and you need to work on the generator why you will take it apart to put in new brushes and at the same time you need to turn the commutator now this is the commutator on the end and it's a segmented uh, piece of copper with mica insulation uh, in between the segments and whether or not this shows up I don't know but there is a groove in the commutator and we need to take that out and we need to uh, clean it up real good with the lathe tool and then some uh, sandpaper. Now many uh, armatures do not have a center hole in the end. This one does but in later versions the bean counters realized that they could save two cents per unit so they eliminated the center hole and quite often in order to hold it in the lathe you had to use an, a Jacobs armature chuck and here's two samples of that and they have brass jaws and I'll show you how to set this up here momentarily. This one has a number two more staper and then the other one has a number three more staper so we'll be using the larger one here and we'll meet you at the closing way, lathe here in a minute. My dad Norman Peterson showed me how to do this many years ago when I was about 16 and had my first car, an old Pontiac. And here we are on the closing lathe and we've mounted the armature shaft into a three jaw chuck. If you've got a collet, collet would probably be better but it definitely has to be an accurate three jaw. Never hold it here by the uh, body of the armature, it has to be held on the shaft and we've got a very sharp tool mounted in the tool holder, I just sharpened it and here's that chuck that we talked about and we're going to bring the uh, tailstock in, lock it, we'll lock the quill and then we need to tighten the uh, brass jaws around there just snug and then this locks it. Now we will definitely need to use some oil because this isn't a ball bearing, this is strictly friction on brass. So we'll use a little thick oil on there. And now it's ready to start turning. So we'll take a short break here. Now I'm going to run this at about a medium speed and a very fine feed. And as you feed, be careful not to advance too far into where the wires are soldered into the commutator or you've ruined the whole thing and you might as well just chuck it and be done with it. So be very careful when you do this, especially if you're working with an antique. Okay, before I start the lathe, a couple more things. First of all, be sure and wear your safety glasses. And secondly, I'm not going to be able to speak during the uh, time that I'm doing the turning because I don't believe you'll hear me over the roar of the cl mighty clausing uh, motor. So uh, what I'm going to do is try to uh, set the depth so that I can take this just in one pass. And uh, I'm going to feed it rather uh, slowly and uh, go ahead and watch this now and I will not be talking during this next segment. Okay, here we go. up as our cut proceeds. I don't think it's going to clean up in one pass. OK, 
Okay, it didn't quite clean up on the first pass, so I'm taking a second pass, and possibly it'll even need a third pass, but there was still a dark spot on there. And uh, we're cutting away. It's an interrupted cut, so there's a lot of chips flying. Be sure and wear your safety glasses. Okay, it cleaned up very nicely and there are no dark spots and there are no grooves. Now next we're going to sand it with some very fine sandpaper. Never use emery cloth. Emery cloth may leave some metallic particles in there that interfere with the electrical uh, features of the armature. We'll polish this up a little bit. If it isn't smooth, it will cause your brushes to wear very rapidly. Now, in some cases, you will need to undercut the mica with a hacksaw blade, or if you have the correct attachment, uh, you can do that. Uh, I'm not going to do that in this particular uh, segment. If there's any interest in that, uh, this, I may put that in a future video. Also, I'm going to hit this corner with a file uh, as it's turning to, to kind of break that, soften that edge. Okay, now, other than undercutting the mica, this armature is ready to reinstall after it's been checked on a growler to make sure it's electrically sound. And I know it works, it's just needed new brushes. So, this is Tubal Kane saying, so long for now and thanks for watching.